ever since Jeep came out with their concept truck. I have been dreaming about the overland build potential and well, the planets aligned and I was able to purchase one. Her name is Amelia and I cannot wait to show her to you. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and this smile has not left my face since I drove off the showroom floor with my new 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon about a week ago. She's got about 500 miles on her, and I gotta say, I love her, and we've got a lot to talk about in the coming weeks about all I've got planned for her. But in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a close-up look, look at all the standard and optional features that this Jeep came with. That way, we kinda know where our starting point is as we begin this build process. Man, I got so much in store for this. Now look, uh, there are some other great reviews out there of the Jeep Gladiator, but to be honest, some of them are not off-road enthusiasts, and so they haven't showed you and talked about some of the things that I think are important. Now that I've spent a week with this, there's some good stuff on here, and there's a couple little criticisms that we will talk about in this video. But before we dive in, I wanna give a big thanks to the folks over at Redlands Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram in Redlands, California. That's where I purchased this Gladiator from, and they made the buying experience awesome. Uh, big thanks to them. All right, guys. Let's take a close up look of my new Gladiator. So this is a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon in Firecracker Red, which come on, that color just pops. And it was so fitting, the Firecracker Red, we purchased it on the 4th of July. That's just so perfect. Now, before we take a close up look at some of the exterior stuff and the dimensions, there's something I wanna talk about at the end of the video, but let me just kind of start it off right now is I said something a while back about purchasing the Sport S over the Rubicon model. And that was before it was actually released and out in dealerships. And there's some reasons why I chose to go with the Rubicon versus the Sport S, but we'll dive a little deeper into that after we've taken a close up look. Now, the first thing that you noticed with the Gladiator is she's long. She's 218 inches long. And to put that into perspective, it's 29 inches longer than a four-door Jeep Wrangler, and it's 51 inches longer than my wife's two-door Wrangler. But the good news is that long wheelbase makes for a much smoother ride. That's something I've noticed right away. And it does still fit in my garage with a few inches to spare, which is great. But our breakover angle has been reduced to 20.3 degrees and our departure angle is now 26 degrees. Now we're gonna correct a little bit of that by giving her a lift, giving her some bigger tires. But look, this is not a rock crawler. We're not gonna be going and doing extreme trails at least not on purpose. It might be a happy accident once in a while. But the goal of this one is long expeditions. So the front portion of the Gladiator is almost identical to the new Jeep Wrangler, which is fine by me because I love the way it looks. And there's already a lot of aftermarket support for the Jeep Wrangler, which means a lot of that is gonna transfer over into the Jeep Gladiator, at least the front pieces. Now, I did not order this, so I didn't get to choose each and every little option for it. I just bought it as it is off the showroom floor. So there's a few things that I would have done differently. Specifically, the Jeep Gladiator has an option for a front-facing camera that goes right in the center top portion of the grill. I think that's a great option and I wish I would have got it. You know, when you're breaking over a hill, to be able to kind of see down would make a huge difference. Now that's not gonna replace a spotter because that camera's not gonna see where your tires are lining up or where your differential is but it is a nice feature. Something else I would have done differently is no plastic bumpers. I can't stand plastic bumpers. Uh, these will be gone very quick. In fact, that's one little disappointment that I've had with the Wrangler and with the Gladiator. There is a lot of plastic on here, especially for the price we paid. I did, however, get the optional LED light package, so that gives us LED headlights, there's LEDs in the fenders, and there's some LED fog lights, which is perfect. I will be adding some off-road lighting to this because we'll be doing a lot of night driving, and you know, we just like to see where we're going when we're out on the trail at night. And here is what the Gladiator is all about. We've got a five-foot truck bed, which, man, this is gonna be so nice. The payload for the Rubicon model of the Gladiator is 1,190 pounds, which is gonna be more than enough capacity for what I've got in store for this, which is gonna be nice because you know my Wrangler, I haven't weighed it, 
but I guarantee it's well over the gross weight. We shouldn't be exceeding gross weight with the Gladiator, at least. Fingers crossed, I hope not. Now I have a cloth tonneau cover on here, and to be honest with you, I didn't know if I was really gonna like this. I figured I'd just rip it off right away, but I actually really do like this. It's very well designed, and what I like is it locks. So when you close the tailgate, you can't access inside there. I mean, of course, you know, a creative thief could get a knife and cut this open and get in there, but you're gonna have stuff that's secured with the tonneau cover, and it flips up here, and then there's a couple latches just like that, and then it just rolls all the way up, which is nice because if a hard, you had a hard tonneau cover, you're kind of committed to just opening and closing, where this, you can roll it all the way up, it's tucked up nice against the cab, and you still have full access to your truck bed. Really super nice. The bed is lined, and I do like the texture on here. It's just enough to keep things from sliding around and keep it secure and protected, but it's not like knuckle busting where it's gonna you know tear off all your skin. There is a rail system inside the Jeep to tie things down, which is going to be good. Unfortunately, I don't know really if it's unfortunate, but the tonneau cover and the rail system, those are all going to get replaced here in the near future, but more to talk about that in a little bit. There is some LED lighting back here, which you can turn on and off from inside the cab, and there is a 115 volt power adapter, it's on an inverter, so that'll be nice to have, but I'm gonna have to run some 12 volt electrical outlets back here for running a fridge and all the other stuff that I do. Uh, the inverter is gonna be nice, but I think I'm gonna use a 12 volt, just like I do in my current Jeep, more than I'll use that. Uh, the truck bed is, man, so much potential for what we're gonna do back here. Now, running down the side of the Jeep, we've got the Rubicon rock rails, and I'll say on my Wrangler, boy, I beat my stock rails up really hard for a long period of time. They're actually very durable, but they did do a great job on the Gladiator by extending that rock rail to the rear part of the truck bed, which is gonna be nice because I mentioned we've got that extra long departure angle and those are probably gonna take a little bit of beating from time to time. I do love just having the tailgate back here. This is gonna be very functional when we do a quick stop on the trail for lunch. And what I also like is if I'm hauling stuff, let's say I go to you know the, the hardware store, I got some two by fours, you can hook these little latches up here and close it just partially, and that will allow you to angle up some plywood or some two by fours so they don't just go sliding out. It's a really nice feature. The drop down of the tailgate, it doesn't just slam down, it's you know perfect like that, I love it. I do like how the Jeep lettering is back here. The LED tail light, the third tail light, is integrated into the tailgate. It's not in the top of the Jeep where you would see it on most trucks, and that's because we can remove the top, we can remove the freedom top, we can remove the doors, because at the heart of the Gladiator, it's still a Jeep, and we get that whole open air experience. I can't wait to tear everything off and go hit the trail. That's gonna be a ton of fun. Now, the Backup camera is right here in the center of the tailgate, and I will say Jeep did an awesome job with the view of the camera. It's very crystal clear. Uh, back here in the bumper, in the steel bumper, there are two tow hooks, which is gonna be nice to have for recovery situations, and that's when I'm towing somebody else out, right? Hopefully they're not towing me out. Um, and then we do have a class four uh, tail hitch. So this has got the tow package with the extra cooling, the 240 amp uh, alternator, and then there is connectors built into the bumper for the towing. And there's some LED lights here for your uh, license plate. And I also do have the backup sensor. So the backup sensors and that camera are gonna come in handy when I start crowding this with all kinds of overland stuff. So I love having a truck bed. The potential back here is so limitless. Now on the back of a Jeep Wrangler, you've got your spare tire hanging off the tailgate. Well, on a truck, we don't want that because we want to be able to access the rear storage area. Although I'm sure somebody will come up with a bumper that's got a swing out tire carrier. But to be honest, I don't think that's something I'm going to do because I like the fact that the spare tire is tucked up underneath and it brings that weight down a little bit lower. Now, this is a 33 inch tire. We'll talk about tires here in a second, but Jeep says you can throw a 35 inch under there. And I've already seen some folks on some forums that are stuffing 37s up under there. So that's reassuring because obviously I'm gonna go larger tires. Now, one thing to consider is the width of the tire. Now, these tires are just over 11 inches wide. And if we go to a 35 or a 37, uh, that's gonna increase that a little bit by, I mean, we're gonna go to like a 12.5, 
maybe a 13.5, I don't know yet, uh, but that's an inch and a half, two and a half inches more that that tire's gonna sit down. And so that's something we'll be keeping an eye on when we're out on some obstacles and we're coming down off of something, seeing if that hits anything, something to keep an eye on. So on the Gladiator Rubicon model, you can either choose all-terrain tires or the mud terrains. And we have the mud terrains and they are the Falcon Wild Peak MTs. And it's interesting that Jeep has switched to the Falcons. They ran the BFGs for a long period of time, but I'll say after about 500 miles on road, these are quiet and they're very comfortable. Now these are a 285-70R17, which equates to about a 33 by 11 inch tire. You know. We're gonna be going bigger eventually, but it is nice that you get a 33 inch tire right out of the gate with the Rubicon. Now, the alloy rim here, is, this is the standard alloy rim. There is one that you can upgrade to, and there is a little red Jeep Wrangler on there, which is kind of a nice Easter egg, but wouldn't it be cool if there was a Jeep Gladiator on there? Yeah, it's cool. But at the end of the day, uh, these are probably gonna go away sooner than later. Uh, we will be hitting the trail and testing these tires out here in the next couple days. Uh, behind the tires, there are standard Fox shocks with the Rubicon model and on the road so far, they performed really well. Down underneath, we've got Dana 44 axles, front and rear, and with the tow package, we got the 410 gears, and it moves right along down the road, no problems, and I think if we tow something, it'll be an easy day. As we go larger tires, we will probably have to upgrade that gear ratio. There are lockers, front and rear, and it's so nice to have those lockers because you just hit that button, and you can lock everything up, and going over an obstacle, or through some mud, whatever you need to do makes life so much easier. Up here in front, there is a front sway bar disconnect, which is electronic. Again, you just push that button and you get to disconnect the sway bar, which allows you to smooth out the ride, get a little more flexy if you need to. Uh, it's a nice feature. There is also what's called a front axle disconnect in the front axle, and that's just a little electronic piece that disconnects the axle and allows them to spin freely when you're in two wheel drive going down the highway to get a little bit better gas mileage. Now up underneath the Jeep, there is some armor with the Rubicon model, but I'll say with the length of this thing, there are quite a few things that are exposed. So as manufacturers start coming out with more armor options, that's definitely something that I'll be looking into because just taking a quick look up underneath there, there are quite a few things that are exposed the stuff that i know that you know bang a rock will hit it and it'll just mess it up so we'll be doing some armor for certain now let's open the hood and take a look now those of you that are familiar with the wrangler will know that it's really easy to access the engine bay there's just two latches on the side and some people don't like that because it makes accessing here from strangers a little too easy but you can get some external locks uh, to access that i will say that on the hood here we've got the little tie downs for the windshield because we can fold the windshield flat on the gladiator which come on that's cool uh, but there are these plastic louvers in here and those are just for aesthetics they are not functional uh, opening up the hood super easy and look this engine bay is really clean it's not going to stay that way for long but a question that i've been getting from a lot of you guys since i started posting pictures of the gladiator on social media is brad what engine did you get and i got the 3.6 liter and for me this is a great engine it's the one i've had in my wrangler it's a workhorse and it's the only one available right now because there is a diesel engine that will be coming out later this year and while i think that motor is going to be a great option with all that extra torque and the better gas mileage, it's not available now. And I've got big trips coming up and I wanted to go ahead and start building the Gladiator, uh, but I think the diesel is a good option. The only thing I can think of that's a negative with the diesel, and again, you can you know prevent this with good planning, but if you're out on the trip and everybody with you has gas and you have diesel, and you get low on fuel, they can't support you or vice versa. Uh, that should never happen if you plan properly, but look, there's been situations where I've gotten low on fuel. so. Uh, now I mentioned that I have this in my Jeep Wrangler and it's got 92,000 miles and it's been running strong. I haven't done any upgrades to it and I don't plan on doing any upgrades to this engine. I know people like to do cold air intakes and superchargers and all kinds of stuff. For me, the reliability of the stock motor, the Jeep engineers have done a great job. I wanna keep it that way. So when I'm out somewhere, I can pull into a Jeep dealership or I can pull into an auto parts store and I can get OEM parts and fix things that I need to. Hopefully that won't happen. Uh, I did mention we got the tow package, which means we get the 240 amp alternator, which is a very nice upgrade. But under here, I won't be doing anything else except maybe a couple little electrical upgrades. Uh, the cool thing is with this Rubicon model, it came with the four auxiliary switches on the dash and that allows you to wire up all kinds of things outside and inside the Jeep. And accessing those wires for those buttons is super easy. There's four here on, on the engine bay and there's four on the passenger side up underneath the feet. 
And so having those auxiliary switches is going to be very convenient, but I probably will add maybe an S-Pod or some other stuff here in the future, depending on how much auxiliary stuff we have, which I'm assuming is probably going to be quite a bit. But look, I know that a lot of you out there want the diesel motor, and I say wait for it if that's what you really want. I've got no complaints about the 3.6 liter. And inside the Jeep Gladiator, I'll say this is a really nice place for some long trips. I love the interior of the Jeep Gladiator. My wife has the two-door JL, and I've really come to love driving that thing. There are so many nice features and creature comforts in here that my JK just doesn't have. I'm just gonna cover some of the things that are specific to this Gladiator that I bought. And I'll start by talking about these seats. And I got the tan leather seats. And I'll be honest with you, before I got to the dealership, I was a little concerned. I'm like, am I really gonna like the tan leather seats? And as soon as I got there, I was like, oh yeah, I love them. These look so nice. It's such a nice contrast to the dark interior. They go really well with the red. You know, it's got a little bit of that Ferrari-esque kind of look, the red exterior with the tan leather. I mean, we're not driving a Ferrari, but it looks cool. I like them. And you know, in my Jeep Wrangler, I had re placed all of my upholstery with that silver leather interior. I don't know if I'm gonna do a custom leather interior in here because I like the way these look. I mean, I don't know, some red leather seats might look cool, but I'm gonna stick with these for a while. Now, there are all kinds of things to talk about in here, but I wanna mention that I love that there's a gladiator on top of the shift lever. That's such a cool little Easter egg. And I didn't mention it when we were under the hood, but this does come with the eight speed transmission. And let me tell you guys, it shifts so nice down the road, both up and down. It's a very, very comfortable ride. The steering on the Jeep, a lot of people have criticisms about the steering. I don't have any criticisms. It drives down the road nice. And that extra long wheelbase just makes for a smooth ride. I'm telling you, I'm six foot two, sitting here driving. It's a comfortable drive and I'm gonna have no issues on some multi-week trips. That's right, I said multi-week. We've got some big trips coming up in the near future, guys. Okay, some of the cool features in this model is it's got the the cold weather package. So we've got uh, heated seats and a heated steering wheel. Uh, look, those aren't gonna get used much here in Southern California, but in the winter, when I wanna take the top and the doors off, it'll be nice to have that. Uh, I'll definitely put it to use. Another cool feature that's in this model is something that I've never used before, and that's adaptive cruise control. And what that allows you to do is set the con cruise control, and then you kind of set the distance between the vehicle in front of you when you're on the freeway, and there's a little sensor up here, this little box up here, and it keeps you a perfect distance at the right speed from that vehicle. And so when that vehicle speeds up, you speed up to whatever speed you set. And when that vehicle slows down, you slow down. I was on the freeway in traffic and it came to a complete stop using that system. I never touched the gas pedal or the brake. My foot was there the whole time because I was not sure what was gonna happen, but it was kind of cool. I know that's not a new technology that's been out for a while. It's the first time I used it. And I thought it was pretty interesting. We've got some USB port down here. We've got an auxiliary port. We've got a 12 volt port. We've got the button for the lockers on and off, the sway bar disconnect, the off-road plus button, which looking in the manual, I'm not really exactly sure what that does, but it does something maybe to the engine and transmission uh, that helps you when you're off-road. Honestly, it didn't say a whole lot in the user's manual. I'll have to open that up and read that. Let's do that right now. So according to the manual, the off-road plus button allows the customer to clearly communicate to the vehicle and the terrain it will be operating on. The vehicle will automatically adjust the operating parameters of the key systems, throttle and traction control and all that kind of stuff. And then down here, it says in for high, it will adjust the operation of the vehicle for higher speed and performance. And then in for low, it will adjust the operation of the vehicle for very low speed rock picking maneuvers. Uh, another comment that we get about our Wrangler all the time is the auto start stop. And when we first got the Wrangler from my wife, that was something that took a little bit of getting used to. But now, I mean, we've had that Wrangler for nine months. I don't even notice it. And so when I started driving this away, it was second nature to me. When I come to a stop and it shuts off, I don't even pay attention to it. I don't mind the auto start stop. It saves a little bit of gas, helping save the planet. It's not a big deal. I know some people hate it. And if you don't like it, you can push that button and turn it off. It's not that not that big a deal, guys. Uh, the other great feature in here is the 8.4 inch Uconnect and it's got the nine speaker Alpine system. There's a little bass woofer back there. 
Man, it's a great stereo system, and I like having the 8.4-inch uh, screen. I wish I could let you hear the music, but I'd get a copyright strike. There is an optional Bluetooth speaker that you can get. I didn't get that, but it's, it sits behind the rear passenger seat, and it charges by itself, but we don't have that, so there's a little storage space back there, which is going to be nice. On the screen, there's all kinds of cool features. One of the best features is the off-road pages, and that allows you to kind of see how the vehicle's performing off-road. Uh, it's a very, very, very cool feature. Uh, leg room in here is really good. I'm six foot two. I've got plenty of leg room. I've got plenty of headroom. And wait until we hop in the back. I think you're going to be very impressed with that. Up here, you got a little cubby uh, for putting stuff. I will probably be mounting my phone and iPad and all that kind of stuff. And we'll be talking more about that here soon. Um, everything is just laid out really well. There's lots of storage in here. It's got a little light in here. I've got two little cubbies. I just really like the interior of the Gladiator. One other criticism I should mention is this one came with the Mopar uh, headliners. And now I installed the headliners in my Wrangler and that really just helps keep the heat out of the cabin and keeps the temperature pretty constant in here. It made a huge difference when I installed those. But here's my criticism. These things are a little bit a little bit flimsy. I mean, there's like, I can stick my finger in there. There's a little bit of a gap. I don't like the fitment on those. They didn't do a very good job. Come on, guys, you could do better than that. I mean, that fitment isn't great. Okay, let's hop in the back of the Jeep. Very cool back here. All right, now, climbing in the back of the Jeep. Boy, I gotta tell you, there is a lot of room back here compared to the Wrangler. I'm six foot two, and this seat is all the way back like I would be driving it. I've got plenty of leg room here. I mean, my son is six foot four. He sat back here. He was like, wow, dad, this is actually pretty comfortable. You've got a ton of headroom, got plenty of leg room, and a very cool feature. Got some rear AC and heater vents back here. There's also power outlet and some cup holders. It's just a nice place if you're going on a long trip. I don't feel guilty about telling my son, hey, you gotta sit in the back while your mom's up front anymore because he's definitely taller than his mom. Uh, it's a nice feature. You do have the Molly back here on the back of the seat and you've got some uh, little nets here, which is nice. I didn't mention, but uh, the Jeep came with cloth floor mats and I quickly replaced those with the rubber floor mats, which are very cool. They've got that little topo on there and I love how it has the red Jeep. Uh, there's also some really cool storage features. Let me show you that. So the rear seats are a 60-40 split. And so that allows you to fold up or down either 60 or 40% or, or all of it all at once. There is a little center armrest here. It's got some cup holders. It's a nice little feature. But what I like is the headrest can be laid flat like that. So if you don't have any passengers back here, you can lay both of those flat and you get plenty of visibility out your rear window. Now, what I love is just pull up on that little strap and this lays perfectly flat. So you can have both of these seats laid down perfectly flat and put all kinds of stuff here on the top. For me, I had my big old camera bag on, uh, up here on the way here, it was perfect. You know, and if you had like a hard box or something, you don't have to worry about tearing up the leather of the seat. You can just store it right up here. There's some straps here you could tie it down to if you want. There is some pockets behind the seat and there's a little mesh uh, basket back here where you can put some stuff. It's a great overall storage system. Uh, I should mention while we're back here that there is a rear window that slides back and forth. It is manual, it's not electronic, but there is some rear defrosters on there. Um, but that's nice to have. You add a little extra ventilation through here. Now, when we put this seat up, we can also have the ability to pull the bottom up and that locks into place. And now you can store something that's you know tall and narrow in here, which that's a great option. But what I really like, and to be honest with you, I didn't know if I was gonna like this or not, is we've got this storage system right underneath the seats. And if you open this up, you've got plenty of space in there. This thing is lockable and it's also 60-40. So you can access it from one side if you want. You don't have to lift both seats all the way up. And this thing is really rock solid. It's very well designed. There's a lot of potential for this thing. But the good thing is, is if you know, you're out, you got the top off and you wanna lock some stuff, you've got that storage capability. You also do have the little storage compartment back here for your bolts and screws uh, when you take the top and the doors off. That's always a nice feature. Uh, I love the way they designed this back here. Nice job, Jeep. Okay, now to address a couple things that you all have been asking. And one is, did I trade my Wrangler in for the Gladiator? 
And the answer is, are you crazy? No way would I do that. I love my JK. We've done so much work to it and I've still got plenty more projects to do. I love wheeling that thing. I love the way it performs off-road. That thing's not going anywhere. I mean, to say I've got an emotional attachment for, to it, well, yeah, that's probably true, I do. Now, the other thing to address is, Brad, why did you buy a Rubicon when you said the Sport S model with the tow package is a good option? Well, I still believe the Sport S model is a good option. It just wasn't the good option for me right now at this time. And here's the deal. The Sport S with the tow package, you know, you get the Dana 44s, you get 410 gears, you get extra cooling, you get all those kind of things, and you get a lower price. But when you start to option it out with the options that I have on this Jeep, that price climbs pretty quick. And then you start throwing lockers on there and all the other stuff that would make it as capable as the Rubicon. I mean, you're gonna save a little bit, but you've just invested a ton of time to get it to that uh, state, which I don't have time to do because I've got some big trips coming up that I wanna take this on, which is gonna be great. And the other thing is there are some things on the Sport S model that you can't get that you can get on the Rubicon. And an example is you can't get the painted fenders on the Sport S. The biggest screen that you can get on the Sport S is the seven inch. And I gotta be honest with you, I like the 8.4 inch screen. That doesn't matter to you, no big deal. The other thing, and I like this because we're gonna do this very quickly, is you can slap on 35s onto this right now, no problems, just because the fenders are a little bit higher. On the Sport model and the Overland model, the, the fenders are not higher, so you cannot do that without lifting it. Now, we're gonna lift this thing eventually, but I can just throw 35s on this right now and go hit the trail. We'll be doing that here soon. So that's why, guys, that I decided to get the Rubicon model. I still believe the Sport S model is a good option. If that's the route you wanna go, the Rubicon is a great off-the-shelf, off-road vehicle. Okay, so there's the introduction to Amelia. We've talked about a lot today. We've still got a lot more to talk about. I know there are a ton of questions about what I'm gonna to do to her, what all options we're gonna throw on there, what kind of rack, what kind of tent, what kind of lift, what kind of tires. We're gonna talk about that all in another video because I think that we've got so many things to discuss that that needs to be its own video. So that's coming soon. I hope you have found this video informative. I hope you're as excited as I am about the Gladiator. Thanks for watching.